going on everybody? Mark Green here from Diabetes Diet Guy and today we're talking about carbohydrate counting. So this has been a blog on my website for quite a while but I thought I'd do an accompanying video for it as it's a bit more visual when you have the video and we can also place it on YouTube. So this is particularly for the patients with type 1 diabetes who want to control any erratic glucose levels that they're having um, and just to get the understanding and the principles behind carbohydrate counting and insulin adjustment for what they're eating. What are the principles of carbohydrate counting? So when we're talking about carbohydrate counting, essentially what we're doing is teaching you how to adjust your rapid insulin based on what you're eating. Now, it's the, the clues in the name. It's the carbohydrates that will affect your blood glucose levels when you eat. So um, if you want to know more about carbohydrates and where they're found in a diet, this is a blog we've done a few times on the website. So check the type 1 section or the type 2 section, and there's plenty about carbohydrates and where they're found in the diet. It's beyond the scope of this video, unfortunately, but we have done it, so check it out. But essentially what carbohydrate counting allows you to do is adjust your rapid insulin based on the food that you're eating. So for example, if you were to go out and have a fish and chips, which is, you know, potato for the chips and batter and mushy peas, that's gonna be a high carb meal. So you're probably gonna to need to take more insulin than what you're used to taking. Whereas if you have um, a salad with a couple of new potatoes in it, so uh, let's say a chicken salad with a couple of new potatoes in it, there's not really anything in there except the potatoes that are gonna affect your blood glucose levels. The salad isn't, the chicken isn't, it's only the potatoes. So you're gonna to need to take a lot less insulin compared to that fish and chips meal. And this is the idea. So you were adjusting the insulin based on what you're eating. Then there's another section that we can add on to this, which is called a correction dose. And this is extra insulin that you give with the meal on top of the insulin that you're gonna give for the food to help lower high glucose levels. So this really helps to just balance out any erratic levels that you're seeing and also stops you running perpetually high all day. So let's just delve into it. So let's look at the carbohydrate side of things first and foremost. Now, the way carbohydrate counting works is you're gonna count up your carbohydrates, and I'll tell you how to do that in a second. So you get a, you get a certain number of how many carbs you've got in that meal. And then based on that, you're gonna, give, you're gonna work off a ratio. So you might say one unit of rapid insulin for X grams of carbohydrate. And this X grams of carbohydrate, this ratio will change for everyone. Some people will be one unit, to 10 grams, which is usually a good starting point. Some people will be one unit for five grams, which means you're giving more insulin. Some people will be one unit for 15 or 20 grams, which means you're giving less insulin. So people, the higher this number here, the more sensitive you are to your insulin. The lower this number here, the more resistant you are to your insulin. Essentially, you need what you need. So let's just say then, for example, that you had a one unit for 10 gram ratio. And then at your meal, you calculate you have 50 grams of carbohydrate for that meal. So one unit for 10, so we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So you have five sets of 10 at that meal. So it's one unit for 10, so you're gonna give five units for that meal. Another way to do it is work out the amount of carbohydrates you have at your meal, and then divide by this number here, and that'll tell you how many units to take. So how do we work out the carbohydrates? There's a couple of different ways. There's a really good app called Carbs and Cows, as in calories. My accent, some people think I'm talking about actual cattle. I'm not. We're talking about carbohydrates and calories, carbs and cows. Really good app. You can buy it for about four, four pounds, I think it is, on the app store, or you can buy the book. And essentially, this just gives you lots of different pictures. I'll try and bring it up on the screen now. But it gives you lots of different pictures of different portions of carbohydrate containing foods, and then you just look at the meal or the portion that most closely resembles your meal, and it will tell you the carbohydrates, and if you're interested, the calories too. The other way to do it is look at the food label. And again, I'll pull something up on the screen here. But every food label will give you the calories, the carbohydrates, the fat, and the protein. We're interested in the carbohydrates, that's the total carbohydrates, not just of which sugar. And it will tell you per 100 grams, this product provides X amount. Now, if you look at rice, that's roughly gonna provide around 70 grams of carbohydrate, okay? But you're not always gonna eat 100 grams of carbohydrates, so you're not always gonna get 70 grams per 100. You might eat 75 grams, for example. 
So how do you, so you have to get some scales for this, but you weigh out your portion, or you can use a measuring cup, which has set portions, so it might be 30 grams in each cup, and you just measure that out two or three times, for example, and then you know that you've got 60 or 90 grams of, uh, of total weight for your meal. But nonetheless, so let's just say, for example, you've measured out, you have 75 grams total weight for your rice, and that's a dry weight. And we know that there are 70 grams per 100 grams in rice. So first of all, we need to convert 70 into one gram. So you do 70 divided by 100, and then you just times it by your weighed portion, which in this instance is 75. And I think that's gonna give you roughly 50 odd grams, I think. So just round it to the nearest 10. So if you weighed out 85 grams, then you're gonna do this for rice. You're gonna do 70 grams per 100 divided by 100 times 85. If it was 125, you times by 125. If there's a lower carbohydrate content, so potatoes, for example, are about 22.5, then this number is going to change to 22.5. You divide by 100 and you times by your weighed portion. Now, the good thing about this is we tend to be creatures of habit. So things like cereal, porridge are going to be very similar portions each day. So once you've done it once or if you're using a measuring cup, you know that's your portion and then you know that's your insulin dose. Sometimes it'll even give it to you on the label. So like bread, for example, says per slice. So if you have two slices of bread, you can just look at per slice, add them together, and that gives you your carbohydrates. Then you plug that into your ratio, one unit for X grams, one unit for 10, for example, and then you give that dose of insulin. But of course, that's only gonna help you with the food that you're eating. You might need to add a correction dose on top of this. So this is the extra insulin you give to reduce high glucose levels. So the idea is you work out your carbohydrates, you know what your ratio is. So let's say we're taking 50 grams then for our meal. So we, uh, so we got 50 grams for our meal. So we know on a one unit to 10 ratio, uh, we're gonna take five units. So we've got five units, that's happening. Test your glucose levels. Glucose levels are say 18, which for most people isn't where they want to be they generally like to be somewhere between five and 10. So I usually like quite a broad range. So we wanna get the glucose level somewhere back between there. Six, seven, eight, nine, that I'm happy there. Even 10, pretty happy. Don't aim too low because you're likely hypo. And I see it all the time, people trying to get it between four and seven. Not gonna happen, you're hypo. Five to 10 is a good range and doesn't put you at any additional risk of long-term complications. So we need to get this down. So we need to add extra insulin onto this five units. Now here we know one extra unit reduces glucose by X. And again, this ratio changes for everyone. So it might be by three, by two, by one, by four, by five. Higher the number, more sensitive to your insulin. Lower the number, less sensitive, more resistant. You need what you need. So let's say one to three is again, that's quite a standard ratio. So one extra unit reduces by three. So if I took one extra unit on top of this five, so I took six in total, that's gonna to drop to 15. If I took two, it's gonna to drop to 12. And if I took three, it's gonna to drop to nine because one extra unit drops three. I've taken three extra units. So three times three drops me nine, which means my glucose level at the next meal will be nine, okay? So what's our total dose then? So we have five for the food plus three for the correction. So our total insulin dose is eight units for that meal. Hopefully that makes sense. Now remember though, rapid insulin lasts four and a half hours. It takes 30 minutes to get into your body, it takes an hour to peak, and then it takes four and a half hours to get out. So if you take your insulin, particularly with this correction dose, let's say it's breakfast and you've added it in, you test your glucose an hour later and your glucose hasn't changed, don't panic because it's not going to change yet because it hasn't had its, the insulin has not had its full action yet. It's not exerted, and it's barely in your system. It's not done its job yet. So when you're doing correction doses in particular, as particularly when you start out, just try and keep it at four and a half hour time spots throughout the day. And generally that ties in quite nicely with breakfast, lunch and dinner and the evening before bed. And that alone will level out the glucose levels quite nicely, particularly if you're someone that springs up and down. Because what you find is usually people take, um, they'll take their insulin, test an hour later, glucose is high, they add more insulin, which adds another four and a half hours to the, to the timeline. Then suddenly it all hits at once, they hypo, so they eat, they go high, they take more insulin, they drop. So just leveling it out, four and a half hours apart, just nicely settles the glucose levels down, 
We're also adjusting the insulin based on what you're eating. And it's just a really nice way of getting on top of your glucose levels. Now you might be thinking that this seems quite long-winded. It's much quicker when you're doing it on the ground. This is explaining it, takes a bit longer. When you're actually doing it, it's easier. I know it's easy for me to say because I'm not the one that has to go do it. Um, and we're not looking for 100% perfection. You know, if you're in target 70% of the time, you're doing very well. Starting to lose my voice a little bit. <clears throat> so I think we'll probably leave it there before I physically can't speak anymore. Hopefully you found that useful. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, like the video if you found it useful. If you didn't like it, thumbs down, I guess. Um, and also if you're watching on the website, diabetesdietguide.com, then we also offer programs and one-to-one -to -one -to consultancy where we've helped lots of people get on top of their health and their diabetes. So check it out if you need a further helping hand. Hope you found this useful. We'll see you at the next video.